In this video, I'm going to show you about how to use custom registration forms for events. And I'm pretty sure that's a feature you didn't know was in your site yet. The first thing you need to do is turn on custom registration forms. And the way you do that is using your top menu admin bar. You navigate to content, come down to events, and you'll click on your settings widget. And that will bring you to this page that we're looking at here, which is your event settings. You'll want to go to custom registration form and hit true for enabled and update the settings. Now, when you go to add events, you will see a new option. And I've started an event over here to save some time. We've already gone over how to add a new event in a previous video. So it's the same form adding an event right from the tab. You have your title and everything else down here. You'll set your dates, your times, your location, those types of details for your event. And you'll see when you scroll down here underneath registration, there is a new box that wasn't there before. And that's the custom registration form. If you want to use a custom registration form, you'll check that box and you have two options. You can use one form for all of your pricing levels, or you can use a separate form for each of your pricing options. And when you check this box, it will have you select a form for each of the pricing below, as you see here. Now, right now, we just see default custom registration form. You have to create your event and select it. We only have one pricing level for this one. So we're going to select default custom registration form, which will be what you see standard for all brand new events. And we're going to make sure our pricing is correct. And then we'll save the changes. Now, as I mentioned, when you select to use a custom registration form with an event, you will always see for brand new events that default registration. And after you create your event, the next step you'll want to follow is to come up back up to your events tab, look for the this event row, and come down to manage custom registration form. This shows you that there is one custom registration form linked to this event. If you had selected to have a different form for multiple pricing tiers, for example, you would see multiple default registration forms. And you would want to come over and click edit. And this is where particularly if you're using multiple registration forms for an event, you would want to use the name. And after you've changed this form in this name, it will change on the event field. So if you have multiple levels, for example, if you have a member versus a members, a non-members form, then you would have one of these be named members custom form, and you'd want to name the other one non-members. Each time you create an event that you select to use custom registration forms, it creates brand new forms and ties them to that specific event. And it will always say default registration form until you have customized it for brand new events. In the notes, it just tells you what the form is going to be. And for this one, I'm going to be asking my event attendees if they have a special dietary request for the meal. For the validate guest box, you would want to check that if each guest would need to have their own uh, response for this. For example, if a family comes in and is registering for four people to an event, in the case of a special meal, I would want each of those individual guests under the one person registering to give me their responses. If you're registering a family and you are looking for their income or you want to know what kind of car they drive, then you might not need it for each guest. Just one head of household might be able to do that. And then you want to make sure the status is active if you're going to be activating this after this. So now you can see this looks much like our other custom forms back in. And this will tie it directly to the event. And you can add as many fields as you would like. You see my mouse will turn into the four arrow widget as I scroll through. This lets you rearrange the order. So you can actually change the order of how the items display on the event roster. And in this case, I want to have a special menu option. And then I don't need to map this to a user field. However, you can see some of these are mapped to user fields. 
and this just shows you the different options you could have. For example, position title would be something for name tags if you wanted to collect that type of information. The phone number might be something you want to collect if you're going to need to call them or have availability for that. You could even have it be a phone number for their mobile phone. So in case something changed the last minute, you could have them opt in to receive a text message for notifications or a phone call. Under type, this is the field type. For this one, I'm going to have them choose from a list. You have a number of options just like our other custom forms. You can have a default option if you would like, and that's what will be displayed just by default if they register. If you leave it blank, it will just pick the first option by default. And I'm not going to make this required. I do want this to show up on the roster so that when I print my roster, I can have a list of who's eating what. I could add another field if I wanted to and then again I can move this like say I want it to be up above the comments field and then I will save it. And so we come back to the event and now you can see it shows special menu options is the name of that custom form. In part two of this video I'm going to show you what it looks like from somebody coming in and registering to use the custom registration form and fill out that information and then show you what that looks like from the site admin's point of view on the roster.